Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. And become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Remember, as you're making your travel plans, check out johnnydollarair.com. johnnydollarair.com is a Priceline affiliate. So you can name your own price on hotels, rental cars, airline tickets, and even more. And your purchase supports the great detectives of old time radio at no additional cost to you. So remember, when making your travel plans, check johnnydollarair.com first. Well, now it's time for today's episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. The original air date, July 19th of 1959, The Will and Away Matter. Johnny Dollar. Johnny, you better come right on back out here. Yeah, back out where and who are you? Johnny, this is Red Bear. The fishing guide out there at Lake Mojave Resort? That's right. Red! Best fishing guide west of the Rocky Mountains. Yeah, I'll go along with you on that. I should have recognized your voice. But where were you last week when I was out there? Over to Kingman. Kingman, Arizona, for a couple of days. That's where I ran into some trouble, Johnny. Bad trouble. Oh, what kind, Red? Well, when Avery Nicolette died... Avery Nicolette? Yes, sir. Well, I went over to bury him on account of I was the only real friend he had. Yeah? And also to attend to his money. He left them to you, Red, huh? Well, you see, Avery showed me his will a couple of months ago. He wrote it all out himself, real legal, from some kind of a book he bought. Yeah? And he said he was leaving everything to me. Insurance and money and everything. So? But when I dug that will out of its hiding place, well, Johnny, somebody changed it. Well, weren't the police and the insurance company able to see that? They claim that I'm all wrong, Johnny, but I know better. You're sure? Only trouble is, well, Johnny, if you ever expect to see me again... You mean that somebody's threatening you? If you ever expect to see me again, you better come out here. Red. And if I was you, I wouldn't waste any time. Johnny... Okay, Red, I'm on my way. CBS Radio brings you Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Accounts submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. To the Greater Southwest Insurance Company, attention of Jake Hessler, Kingman, Arizona office. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the will and away matter. <laughs> Expense account item one, 15450, plane transportation from Hartford to New York to Las Vegas, Nevada. Item two, 50 bucks deposit on a rental car. Instead of driving directly south to Lake Mojave Resort, I took Highway 93 to Kingman, Arizona. I went straight to Jake Hessler's insurance office on East Palm Drive. Johnny Dollar. Well, sit down, Johnny. Tell me all about you. Ah, thanks, Jake. Well, I suppose you're here on account of Avery Nicolette's insurance. That's right. Wrote his policy himself. 10,000 straight lines. And the beneficiary? To be named in his will. You sure the policy read? Well, isn't that rather unusual? Entirely irregular. There's a bit of doing with the company, but that was what he wanted, and that's what he got. And it's made us a lot of trouble. How, Jake? Well, first of all, after he died, nobody knew whether he'd even made out a will. All right, then. Well, that is until some old character from old Lake Mojave come along and showed us where he'd hidden it. There in that house he was renting. That was Red Bird. That's right, Lloyd Bird. He called himself Red. I understand he was a very good friend of Nicholas. Only real friend he ever had, I guess. They used to be some prospecting or cattle raising or something together. And Red was named to get everything Avery had except insurance. Well, what was there besides the insurance? Oh, Avery's clothes, money. How much money? A couple of thousand dollars he had in the bank. Now, look, about that will. Johnny, we were glad enough to have him find it for us, and it was okay. A whole graphic will, but okay. 
But when Red claimed that Edgar was leaving everything to him, only the will said otherwise. Red called me on the phone, Jay. Yeah, he threatened to do that. And he told me that will has been tampered with. That's what he told us, only it wasn't done. And if you don't believe me, you can ask the police and the lawyer about it, and you ask them gentle. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, they got so fed up with Red having no grounds to substantiate his claim that... Well, they told him if he didn't stop lying about it and bothering him, they'd pour him clean. Oh, Jake, I know Red. I know him well. I know that now and then he might stretch the truth a bit about some of his experiences, the places he's been, about the big fish over there in Mojave that he knows that I've heard. Uh, Johnny, that's the very reason. But there is a malicious bone in this whole party. And I refuse to believe that he'd ever lie or try to pull a fast one for 10000 or $10 million. Yeah, but Johnny... Now, who is supposed to get his insurance? A fellow named Louis Marino. Who's Louis Marino? Well, according to Mrs. Turner... Oh, she? Mrs. Mary Turner. She was a kind of a nurse and housekeeper for Avery the past few months. Real nice woman. And according to her? Well, she didn't know much about this Marino, but she'd heard Avery mention him once or twice that he lived up in Vegas. And, of course, she saw his name in the will when she witnessed it. Who else witnessed that will? Old Tim Hanson. Well, what does he say about it? Well, Tim got killed about three months back one night in April. Got drunk and run his car off the highway down towards Needle. Well, he's no help. Where do I find this, Mrs. Turner? Still at the house, Avery was in. And she swears that Marino was mentioned in the will right from the beginning, huh? Yeah, but your friend Red Barry. Okay, did. Jake, I'll see you later. Uh, you going over to here? First, I think I'd better talk to Red over at Lake Mojave Resort. And get myself a room for the night. Ask me, Johnny. You're just wasting your time and your money. Oh? My money? Mm-hmm. I'm on an insurance case, remember? So, I'm on expense account. Uh, what? Sure. With your company footing the bill. <laughs> now, now, Johnny. See you later, Jay. Uh, it was after dark when I reached the Lake Mojave Resort. And yeah, Fred was waiting for me in his comfortable motel room. We got right down to cases. And I tell you, Johnny, that when Avery showed me that will, there was never any such a name as Louis Marino on it. And that was a couple of months ago, on his birthday, May 11th. I'd taken him a couple of nice steaks to celebrate. Yeah. Now, what was this about your being threatened? Yeah. Threatened? Well, that's what you implied to me over the phone. Well, now, oh, wait a minute. Were well, you just stretching things a bit to make sure I'd come out here? Oh, now, Johnny. Yeah, I should have known it was something like that. No, sir. Oh, that is... Well, if you could have seen Reno's face when I told that lawyer, the surrogate, that somebody had meddled with Avery's will, and when I said I was going to send oh, for you... Oh, Red, you old reprobate. You're in about as much danger. Huh? Now, who, who'd be out there practicing with a gun this time? And... Sit down. Douse the lights. Sure will. Johnny... That nicked my shirt. Out there practicing, huh? Those bullets were meant for you. Maybe. Oh, maybe you, Johnny. And the will and away matter. I thought Red Barrett there at the Lake Mojave Resort was spinning another one of his yarns when he told me he was being threatened by the beneficiary of the insurance he thought that he was entitled to. That is, until a couple of gunshots crashed in through the window of his motel room. Yes, sir, Johnny. That Louis Marino knew that I was going to send for you, so those shots could just as well have been meant for you as for me. Wait a minute, Red. Somebody stay low. Leave the lights out. Hey, Red! Red! It's Buster. Buster Fave, yeah. Johnny! Hi. Red said you were coming out here to help him. Yeah, Buster. Pull down the blinds, Red, and turn the lights on again. Sure, Johnny. Those shots, Johnny, and I heard this window break. They came from a car up on the old mine road above here. And the car took off and went over the hill. So it looks like Red was right. Red, how much do you know about this Louis Moreno? I tell you, Johnny, I never even heard of him until I dug Avery's will out of the linen closet. There at his house, and I saw Marino's name on it. Only thing I know about him is that he's been living up there in Vegas, working in a garage about three, three and a half months now. Hmm. Then he must have arrived there shortly before old Tim Hansen died. Which probably doesn't mean a thing. Well, old Tim was uh, the other witness to Avery's will. Johnny, I knew old Tim pretty well. He was kind of a general handyman over there in Kingman. I used to have him come over here and give us a hand now and then. So? 
Well, did you hear about how he died? Sure. Got drunk one night and ran his car off the road. Only Tim never touched the stuff. You're sure of that, Buster? Yes, sir. Well, did you tell the police and coroner? Yeah, and I guess they changed their report. Not that it means anything. I wonder. Let me get some dates straight. Uh, dates, Johnny? Yeah, how long was Avery Nicolette living over there in Cayman? Since January. And before that? California. Uh, working in the oil field. But the doctor told him if he didn't get over here in the desert that his lungs wouldn't hold out more than a couple of months. Uh-huh. When did Mrs. Turner take over as his nurse and housekeeper? Oh, Mary started working for him in March when he when he took real sick. That's when he made out his will, too. And Mary and Tim were the witnesses. That's also about the time Louis Marino arrived in Vegas. Oh, yeah. Johnny. No, no, let's not try to tie these things up until we have good reason to. Well, you ask me. Then it was back in April that Tim Hansen died. Yes, sir. And when did you see the will? In May. That was the time I almost got killed. What? Oh, I'm coming over the pass that night on the way back here. The steering on my car gave out. Wait a minute. Did anyone examine it after that happened? Well, I had it fixed, if that's what you mean. No, that isn't what I mean. What are you thinking of, Johnny? Plenty, Buster. Red, where is that will now? Well, it's still with Lawyer Robbins, I guess. Over in Kingman? Yes, sir. He's a surrogate on it. And he lives right over his office on North Poplar. Good. Then I'm going over there to see him. You ask me, Mr. Dollar, you're wasting your time, but... Well, here you are. Last will and testament of Avery Charles Nicolette. And it's all in order. Perfectly legal. I couldn't have dictated a better letter myself. The part that Red Barrett claims was added to is... To my best and oldest friend, Lloyd Barrett, I bequeath the whole of my estate... Right here. ...with the exception of the proceeds from my life insurance policy, which I should go to Louis Marino of Las Vegas, Nevada. You see? It's in the same hand. Yeah, it looks to be. It is. I even had Mr. Brinkerhoff down at the bank check the handwriting. Even the police brought in a handwriting expert. Wait a minute. What? Have you got a magnifying glass, Mr. Robbins? Oh, yeah, sure. Now, right here. Thanks. Hmm. Now, listen, Mr. Dollar. Well, listen, Mr. Robbins. I don't know whether this last part is in Avery Nicolette's hand or it's just a clever forgery. But if this has been tampered with... And I tell you... But I'll tell you this. I'm betting the Louis Marina was put in after the will was signed and witnessed. But in that case, the will wouldn't be... Well, what I mean is... Well, that is to say that... Instead of trying to think of something to say, Mr. Robbins, I want you to call a meeting for me. Tomorrow morning, here in your office. A meeting? Where is Marino? Well, right here in Kingman, uh, awaiting payment of... Okay, I'll bring Red Barrett over from Lake Mojave myself, but you get hold of Marino and Mrs. Mary Turner. Well, now, Mr. Dollar... Now, wait. Say, 10 o'clock sharp, Mr. Robbins, okay? Now, Mr. Dollar... Okay, I'll see you then. As it turned out, I didn't go back and pick up Red after all. Oh, sure, I started to. Even got a few miles out on the highway. But I ended up by telephoning him for a room I'd taken at a motel right there in Kingman. As for my red old car, well, I don't want to sound dramatic, but what happened was this. About two or three miles out of town as I was driving along, yeah, a funny buzzing noise in the motor. And it stayed real constant even when I slowed down. Well, I've heard that noise before, so I decided to get as far away from that car as I could, but fast. And I ducked behind a mound of gravel there at the side of the road. Yeah. Yeah. You know something? As the sordid parts and pieces came sailing down around me, I was kind of glad that I had got out of that car. I had underestimated the Kingman, Arizona police. When I called them after having my car blown to bits, I learned from Sergeant Tommy Parker that they, too, had been suspicious of Avery Nicolet's will, and particularly of the main beneficiary, Louis Marino. First thing in the morning at police headquarters, Parker laid out the facts for me. Well, it was the police up in Vegas who first ran a make on him, Dollar. Why, Sergeant? 
Because he'd got to turn out of a couple of gambling joints up there when he tried to get a job. Before he worked in the garage. Yeah. You know, the men who run those casinos are a pretty wise bunch. Somebody recognized him as Louis the Penman from Chicago. Penman, a forger. That's right, from one of the mobs. And just for luck, I started checking on this young housekeeper of Nicolette's, Mrs. Turner. Only her maiden name was Mary Polito. Young, did you say? In the late 30s. Dark hair, dark complexion, real good looking. No wonder she had herself a flock of husbands. Wait a minute, don't tell me. Yeah, Dollar, the last was an old man named Harry Turner. Died about a year ago in a car accident. Car accident? The one before was another old man, Lawrence Fulbright. Another car accident. Same pattern. But her first husband... Lawrence Louis Marino. Right. Well, Miss T, you've done yourself proud. Eh, maybe so, but unless we can somehow hold on to them. Which is to say, unless we can find something wrong with that will. And don't forget, the handwriting expert I called in said it's okay. Sergeant, maybe that expert overlooked something. So? Come on. It's about time for the meeting at the lawyer's office. Wisely enough, Sergeant Parker decided to stick around outside while I went into the meeting. Present were Mr. Robbins, the lawyer, Red Barrett, William Marino. I couldn't blame Red for not liking his looks. And Mrs. Mary Turner. At the moment, Red had the floor. And I tell you, I tell you, I don't want the money. I'll give it to charity. But I don't want it going to somebody that Avery never even heard of. This. What do you this... mean he never heard of me, you crazy old bum? Because he would have told me. That's why. Because he told me everything. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Barrett, but I'm sure I heard Mr. Nicolette mention Louis, Louis Marino many times. And when I saw his name in the will... Somebody put it there after I saw it. You're crazy. All right, now, folks. Listen, old man, if you think you can break this... Maybe well... I can, Louis. Huh? Who... Who's this gentleman, Mr. Robbins? This is Johnny Dollar, Mrs. Turner, oh. investigator for the insurance company. Well, Good. Not that it makes any difference to me whether Mr. Marino gets that insurance money. Oh, I think it does, Mrs. Turner. Mrs. Mary Polito Marino Fulbright Turner. What? Did you toss in a Marino somewhere along there, Johnny? No, Mr. Dollar. Listen here, Dollar. Marino, it may be tough proving that you caused the death of the other witness of that will, poor old Tim Hanson. It was a car accident. He was drunk. They found the bottle right beside him. He never took a drink in his life. I suspect that bottle, if there was one, was planted in his car by the mechanic who tampered with the steering. Who said? And come to think of it, you are a mechanic, aren't you, Louis? Well, sure, sure I am, but that doesn't mean and a it thing. It might be hard to prove you planted that bomb in my car. Now listen, Dollar. You tampered with the steering on Reds and tried to kill him off after you realized he'd seen the original will. But sooner or later, I think these Kingman police will be able to pin these things on you. The only thing I have to prove, though, is that this will was tampered with. And I think I can. Yeah? How? Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Dollar, but that will is exactly as it was in the beginning. Mrs. Turner, did you actually see it written? Mr. Hanford and I both saw him write it. Then Mr. Nicolette signed it. We signed it. Then he folded it up and put it in the envelope. Oh, this paper wasn't folded before? No. It was some new stationery he just got himself. You're sure? Of course. Why do you ask a thing like that? The paper has a coating on it, like most papers of this kind. Some of that coating cracks a little bit when it's folded. It takes a magnifying glass to see it. Oh, so what? So when something's written on it after it's been folded, the ink will spread a bit over the tiny cracks made in the coating. What? Yeah. Like it has on this part. It was added later. To give the insurance to Louis Marino... After Mrs. Turner found the will in the linen closet. How do you know? I, I mean, I... No. Added no. after the other witness died. After Red Barrett saw it. Take a look with your magnifying glass, Mr. Robbins. Yes, I certainly shall. So, Louis, despite your excellent copy of Avery Nicolette's handwriting by writing yourself in over the fold in that paper, you pulled up boo-boo. You're right, Mr. Dollar. Absolutely right. Well, Mary, Louis. All right, Dollar. You see this gun? Yeah. Well, he pulled a gun and started to make even more of a fool of himself. But then Sergeant Parker quietly walked in and took over. And you know something? 
I think that given time with Mary and Louie in the clink for this forgery, he'll probably pin those other things I mentioned on him. He's a good man. Expense account total, including the blown up rental car, 3280 bucks. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, a beautiful girl, a terrible storm, and a miracle. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Sunny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Barney Phillips, Forrest Lewis, Harley Bear, Jack Boyle, Billy Halp, and Byron Kane. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Jim Matthews speaking. Hi, this is Andrew from otrwesterns.com. I wanted to invite you to come take a look at our site. We stream live OTR Westerns 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, along with putting out podcasts of old-time radio westerns. Check us out at otrwesterns.com. You're listening to The Great Detectives of Old-Time Radio with Adam Graham. Now let's get back into the show. Welcome back. Well, I guess the ironic thing for the insurance company is that uh, if Johnny had signed up for insurance and the rental car and put it on his expense account, paying for the rental car wouldn't be such a big deal. So I don't know what type of insurances they offered back then in... Uh, 1959. And I like how Johnny told the agent that he was traveling on expense account, whether the agent had asked for him or not. Kind of one of the big benefits of being Johnny Dollar. All right, well, that'll actually do it for today. Join us back here tomorrow for Dragnet. And a week from Tuesday, the lineup returns. And next Friday, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Also, remember to check out The Amazing World of Radio, now available at amazing.greatdetectives.net. In the meantime, if you have a comment, send it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com.